honor to be here this evening with all you fellow travelers. <sighs> I, uh, I'm going to share a personal tale with all of you, and I invite you all to see aspects of yourself. I'm going to share a very intimate story of um, my two beautiful parents, uh, Paul and Jean Fredrickson. This is an image of them on their wedding day. Their wedding vow, uh, when they got married, I, I, I was actually, I should begin by saying this, <laughs> uh, they were, uh, they got pregnant with me very unexpectedly. Uh, my mother was on the pill, so I also defy science in that way. I came through, that's how committed I am to being here. <laughs> Uh, they got pregnant with me unexpectedly and uh, were extremely poor. And uh, they made a pact and a vow to evade taxes. <laughs> uh, my mother was a waitress and she supported our family. My father invested in the stock market uh, and they decided to not pay their taxes so that they could afford me. My father was a genius, uh, truly a genius, and he masterminded essentially uh, different ways to house the money um, that started to grow and grow and grow from his genius in the stock market. And the money tree grew, he accumulated millions of dollars and created erroneous spellings of our last name, uh, mailboxes and the whole bit. And, um, and essentially what they had decided, unbeknownst to me, was that if they ever got caught um, for evading taxes that they would kill themselves. On October 1st of 1997, both of my parents um, came and found me. I was living with them in Durango, and uh, I was working out at a gym. And my father brought me upstairs to the parking lot where I saw my mother throwing up. And he said that the FBI had been at their home earlier that day, and that they were to appear in court uh, within the next three days, and that they had no intention to appear in court and that they basically have three days left to live. I uh, invited my parents to go to my cabin. Uh, I was living in a cabin very remote from town to just center and ground. It's one thing to make a, a, an agreement with yourself. Um, and, and granted, it had 30 years to incubate in the field of fear that they were in. Um, and it's quite another to be faced with that actual reality. So I invited my parents to go to my home where they could um, really be present with their choice. And uh, I remember in that moment, uh, I was listening to my father arguing with my boyfriend at the time, and he had told my boyfriend that they were planning on uh, committing suicide. And my boyfriend said to them, you know, how can you be so selfish? How can you do this to Laura? How can you mess her up for the rest of her life? I'll never forget listening to my father say, who's more selfish, her for wanting us to stay on a planet that we no longer want to be on, or us for wanting to leave in the way that we choose to leave. That was the first time in my life that I ever prayed. Um, I remember sitting on the stairs in my, um, my cabin, and I knew that I couldn't commit my parents. They were actually a very sound mind. But in the same breath, I knew that they really needed more time to be with their choice. And um, within moments, the feds drove up my driveway um, and arrested my parents, which was an incredible blessing. Um, they hired a top-notch attorney. Where they were able to um, get out on, on bail. And for the next six weeks, I sat in company with my parents as they did the dance of were they going to live or were they going to die. And for the first three weeks, I proceeded to be the most incredible cheerleader <laughs> you've ever seen. Um, really, really trying to convince my parents that they had an opportunity to be free for the first time in their life. You have to understand my father and his whole mission was financial freedom, ironically. And yet they were not free a day in their life. They had the freedom to go about, travel the world, um, but deep down because they were so imprisoned in fear, um, they actually never experienced freedom. And I, um, I remember sharing with my father, he, he had told me, you know, um, it's not a question of if we do it, it's how and when. 
they even engaged me to help them with getting a gun, to be present with them when they, when they actually did it, and had completely lost sense um, of any healthy boundaries. And at that point, I really had to disengage with them. And I said, if you guys choose to live, I'll be with you 100%. If you continue to go down this path, I don't want to have anything to do with it. So I made a very clear boundary at that time, and um, it ended up that the attorney they had hired had discovered that my mother was looking at six months in a halfway house, being let out on weekends, and my father was looking at 12 to 24 months in a minimal security um, situation. My father told me, Laura, I won't spend one day in jail. Not one day. This the image you just saw before this, if you could bring that back up, Trina. Um, this was actually the last image taken of my parents. They had a, they had a place in Hawaii. Um, they lived in Hawaii and also in Durango. We turned back to Durango in Colorado, and um, my parents disappeared November 12th of 1997. And uh, I absolutely knew that they had done harm to themselves. Uh, it was a time when I was in the deepest grief. Uh, absolutely no one in my life um, believed me. I even had an attorney that said had been in uh, the IRS legal profession for 30 years. He said, this is just a tax case. And I said, no, you don't understand. My parents have done harm to themselves. Their bodies were missing for nine months. Um, nine months later, uh, two fishermen discovered their tents and um, I was asked to identify the bodies. I didn't want to have any part of that, but they were um, definitely identified. And I um, ended up battling the IRS, and I won their estate. I came into millions of dollars. <coughs> and I went down the similar path that my father had gone down. I started trading in the stock market. I was invested in companies I knew nothing about. I ended up um, losing in the tech collapse of 2000. I ended up losing sometimes twenty to thirty thousand dollars every half hour, and started to recognize the absolute madness of my life, and that there was still an energetic umbilical cord attached to my father, and I was making the same choices he had. I found myself in an abusive relationship. Um, I ended up losing all the money I'd come into. Uh, my home was in foreclosure. I was dealing with a forest fire on the property that I had owned. Literally every single material possession in my life was crumbling around me. And I ended up um, deciding that I too was going to commit suicide. It was just too much for me to handle. What I chose to do instead was to tell the truth and to share with my best friend at the time that I was plotting a way to kill myself and that I just couldn't continue down this path. And I'll never forget, she ended up looking at me, looking at my soul for the first time in my life. I felt truly seen. And there was just this incredible exchange between two hearts. And I remember sitting down on my couch and I, I just remember just feeling a pinprick of hope because I had just admitted what I'd been carrying for so long. And I sat on my couch, and in front of me was a book I had never seen before on Chinese numerology. And I just thought to look it up on my life path number, which was a nine. And the whole theme of my life path was let go and let God. Now, I had been raised in an atheist home. I had an aversion to the word God. Um, but I proceeded to read the book, and in the first page and a half, it basically summarized everything that had happened to me. That you may lose loved ones, you might lose money in the stock market, you might be dealing with a natural disaster, but if you can learn to let go and let God, you will have the most incredible life filled with adventure, global travel, and love beyond your wildest imagination. That was my wake up. That was the moment that I realized I was more than just a human being. It was the moment that I realized that there was a divine choreographer, that everything in my life was absolutely on purpose. There was a purpose for the pain. And I remember that I started to surrender 
and I started to pray, but it wasn't prayer with specifics, which I had done before. Please turn the stock market around. Please help the relationship. <laughs> it was truly letting go. And I remember at one point I just, I literally just opened my arms and I said, just show me, just use me, show me, show me what to do, because I don't know. And it was that profound I don't know that opened this incredible portal for me. And I started to receive divine guidance in a myriad of ways. There were sponsors and ambassadors of well-being that came into my life. Um, my life now, uh, actually, I am living the legacy and the prophecy of that book. I live in an amazing community with Elevate here in Ojai. I am fortunate enough uh, to have the privilege of really supporting people at this incredible pivotal time in our human evolution, to center into the truth of their hearts, to center into the power of our ability to cultivate the most ultimate resource of all time, which is our connection to source. Now, whatever you want to call that energy, there is a benevolent, life-giving energy that is available to every single sentient being on this planet. It's the energy that's breathing us. It's the energy that's beating our hearts. It's the energy that actually created all of us in our mother's womb without her conscious knowing of it. It's the energy that spins this earth in perfect proximity to a life-giving sun. I could ramble uh, for the next <laughs> hour about this life-giving energy, but truly, it's available to each and every single one of us. Here's the key element that we're being woken up to right now. We have to be in alignment with it in order for us to receive this incredible abundance in our own lives. And how we come into alignment with this is through the placement of our attention. Your attention is your greatest commodity. It is your greatest gift. If your attention is based primarily in love and appreciation, it is my promise to you that you will be open to receive all of the incredible divine gifts, whether it be in the form and the cooperative relationship of that which we call money, people, insights, inspirations. It is a gift that is available for all of us. But our attention is really the key. And this is all courtesy of law of attraction. There is a gravitational pull to your consciousness. So I invite each and every single one of you to really remember your self-worth, which is truly, truly, truly your heart. You have an incredible guidance system. Incredible guidance system. I encourage each of you and all of us to stop shooting on yourselves. <laughs> shooting, no shooting. Follow your bliss. Follow your heart. You'll always be at the right place at the right time. And truly remember your life is priceless. Thank you.